Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I am Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are two of the Office Blokes. Yep. Unfortunately, Office Bloke Mike disrespected both of us. Yep. At the same time. Yep. So we had to... Uh, put him back in his box. Put him back Literally. in his box for, yeah, for a couple of days. Oh, oh, just a few days? Well, depends. Oh, I didn't have that planned. <laughs> oh, have you left him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've still got the key, haven't you? <laughs> what key? Oh, shit. <laughs> Right, if you'd like to replace Office Bloke Mike as the next Office Bloke, mm. make sure you comment below. Comment below how much you think the bottom tier of Patreon should be. That's what the turnout was about, and that was a disrespectful. We, we thought we had to keep it £1.50. Yeah. Mike, with inflation, wanted to put it up to £1.55. He got his, got his clipboard out, started talking about the Bank of England and all that sort of stuff. He's the, only night, he's the only guy I know, Mike, who goes out to get his lunch and puts a high his vest on. Yep. <laughs> To the shop. <laughs> well, he eats the same lunch every single day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're not lying. Uh, right then. Ten times NBA legends disrespected each other. Only ten? I guess. Top ten. Top ten. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get straight into this one. Respected each other. And for number ten, we got the time that Reggie Miller thought he could just disrespect Michael Jordan and get away with it. To Richardson, one on two, one on three. Oh, couldn't get it. And put back home, it did fall. Now, Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller having a go at it. And I mean, we got this going. Here come the benches. Yeah. Hey, Jordan was about to claw that man's eyes out. But this was just one fight. It was a weird move, that one, that hand on the face and then pull across like yeah. he was. Like he was going for his eye. Well, it was one of them where he just, uh, just barged into him for no apparent reason, isn't it? Yeah. Winding you up. Got to retaliate. It's malicious though, going for the eyes, isn't it? In a sport like this. Some legends take the disrespect to a whole new level. Because in number nine, Paul Pierce is literally addicted to disrespecting LeBron James. Yeah, back in 2016, when Paul became an analyst for ESPN, the man decided to dedicate his entire TV career to trash talking LeBron. You know, my hair is out the league. We wasn't afraid of LeBron. I would trade LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a big hit on his legacy. And I've already said he's not a top five player of all time. I don't want to hear none of this goat talk no more. Why do you think he moved to Miami Beats? You huh? moved him there, Paul? I don't know why you're huh? Paul, you I sent the U Haul. Something and I spit at him. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I hit somebody or not, but I spit in that direction. Did he just say he spit on LeBron? Ugh. But hey, at least you can tell the hate that he's got for Braun is real. Because for number eight, what if I told you one of the most legendary beefs in NBA history was one big lie? Back in 1998, the Bulls were taking on the Jazz in the NBA Finals. When in game six, with Chicago just one win away from the championship, Dennis Rodman and Karl Malone started doing something weird. Every other play, they were getting extra aggressive with each other. Almost like they were professional wrestlers or something. Now, you might be thinking, these dudes were just going at it, being competitive because the championship's on the line. I mean, that's what I thought. Until I heard the commentators say this. He and Carl Malone, regrettably, are scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to lower himself to that is anyone's guess. And Rodman apparently wants to start the wrestling now. Yeah. It turns out that these two had a wrestling match mm. coming up, and they were using their time in the NBA Finals to promote it. And this entire beef was fake. But I mean, it ended up being worth it for both of them. Because a month later, they wrestled on live TV, and they each got paid over a million dollars for it. Wow. Damn. That's definitely a, a bit of a piss take, isn't yeah. it, doing it on the court? Well, especially in the NBA Finals. Yeah. That's disrespecting the sport. Yeah. Oh. It's not like Dennis Rodman to be disrespectful it's towards Carmelo. anyone or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think being disrespected could ever end well. Especially after hearing about number seven. The time that Kobe Bryant's disrespect destroyed an NBA super team. Yeah. Back in 2012, Kobe and Dwight Howard teamed up on the Lakers. I'm talking prime Kobe and prime Dwight. These two were expected to dominate the NBA and grab rings left and right. But just three months into their first season, shit hit the fan. See, in a game against the Clippers, Dwight ended up tearing his shoulder. 
and uh, this injury was so bad, he was told he needed surgery and could miss up to six months. So obviously, the man took a little break to recover. But uh, Kobe, he wasn't so understanding, telling the media, we don't have time for Dwight's shoulder to heal. We need some urgency. Dog, this man's got a busted shoulder. What do you want him to do? And Dwight was wondering the same thing, because later that day, he clapped back at Kobe in an interview, saying, Kobe's not a doctor. I want to play, but at the same time, this is my life. Yeah. This one incident caused tensions between Kobe and Dwight to skyrocket. They started bickering on the court, arguing in the locker room, and throwing shade at each other to the media. But the final straw came after they were eliminated in just the first round of the playoffs. And with that, Kobe snapped his fingers and made Dwight disappear. Mm. Yeah, Dwight signed with Houston and officially ended the Lakers super team. But I mean, it could have been worse for Dwight. He could have had to put up with Shaq. Was Kobe injured there? At that? Like he'd done his footing, didn't he? I thought that was going to be the sort of culmination of it yeah. all, was Kobe would be injured and then he'd say, not got time for Kobe yeah. to be injured. Yeah. Just give it him straight yeah. back. With injuries like that, especially in sport, his livelihood. You can't rush back. No. I don't think many people fake the injury. No, I think some people get lucky that they're not seriously injured, so mm. they have a different perspective of it. They probably play through strains. Yeah. Whereas, mm. you know, someone's done a legit thing. If they want to play for the next 10 years, they better get that sorted. Yeah. Yeah, we were having a conversation something similar yesterday about players who mm. can play, not in the NBA, but in, in football, about certain players can play through a pain threshold. Yeah. Whereas other players, they get a twinge and they're out. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they just they just don't want to play. They don't want to know. Yeah. But other players have that sort of mentality. And sometimes I think it's more... When I look at football, like our style of football, the South Americans have that pain threshold where they can play a little bit harder yeah. and they'll keep going. Wasn't uh, Alex Ferguson known for that, for pushing players and people were getting like cortisol or cortisone injections mm. yeah. minutes before yeah. games because mm. their knees are just done. Yeah. It's like whatever you can do to yeah, get them out it. on we the need field. It for the day, yeah. Yeah. So I guess he had that mentality. Mm. But I, I think some of the top of the top probably do have that mentality because you've got to put your whole body on the line. Some do, some don't. Some it's not like chicken out, if they sort of speak. Yeah, you know, don't well, want to know. I'm sure there's plenty of people um, who've got injured at the, just as their career's about to kick mm. off because they've played through something. Though it's hard. That's why you've got to be careful. One of my mates' dads uh, played for. I want to say played for Stoke years ago. We're talking like you know, he's probably late fifties mm. now. He signed for Barcelona and got a career-ending injury before he yeah. could go over there. Wow. And he was Spanish anyway. He's mm. like Spanish yeah. sort of national. So I don't know if there was if it was first team or or what. Yeah. But he was literally like about to ascend to the you know the heights, yeah. and uh, that was it for him. Yeah, shame. Like in number six, because uh, the way that Shaq disrespects <laughs> NBA legends should get him locked up in a straitjacket, surrounded by squishy white walls in a federal penitentiary. Yeah, this man is a nutcase. See, uh, Shaq once said that as a kid, he was denied an autograph by Hall of Famer David Robinson. And ever since that day, Shaq was filled with a burning rage, swearing that if he ever made it to the NBA, he'd do everything he could to get revenge on Robinson. And that's what he did. Shaq against Robinson. Drive, stop, slam, dunk. Wow. Well, he just made David Robinson a poster child. But years later, after they both retired from the NBA, Shaq had a little confession to make. Set the record straight on the David Robinson story. And the, the way I have heard it was that he stiffed you for an autograph when you were a kid and you held it against him. And you're not, now you're telling me this is not true? It's not true. I made it all up. Mr. Robinson, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Shaq just completely <laughs> lied about the entire thing. This man's a psycho. Now, the disrespect between Shaq and Robinson may have been fake, but in number five, the beef between Scottie Pippen and Charles Barkley is so real, it's been haunting them for decades. See, back in 1999, Scottie and Charles were teammates on the Rockets, and they were expected to win an NBA title. But instead, they were eliminated in just the first round of the playoffs. And with a loss that embarrassing, Scotty decided to blame Charles and request a trade. I mean, 
that's all pretty damn disrespectful. So uh, our boy Charles, he wanted an apology. Well, uh, I think Scotty had something else in mind. I wouldn't get Charles Barkley an apology at gunpoint. So he could never expect an apology from me. If anything, he owed me an apology for coming and play with his star effect, but... Damn, Scotty. <laughs> All you gotta do is say sorry, man. Jeez. But uh, thankfully, everything got resolved. Scotty was traded to the Blazers, Charles retired from the NBA, and the beef was over. <laughs> Until two decades later. When in 2021, Scotty did a GQ interview to promote his new book, promote his bourbon, and diss Charles again, saying, yeah, Charles is in the Hall of Fame, but when you think about success and winning, you don't speak of Charles Barkley's name. And uh, I mean, if you know Charles, he's not just gonna let that slide. So he came back as Scotty one final time. Scotty, I've always liked you. You're a good player. I ain't. We ain't never got to fight. We ain't never had no bad words. All of a sudden, I'm a bad guy because you got a book and a bourbon coming out. I just kind of felt sad. It's, you know what I felt like? When I'm watching TV and I'm seeing somebody who's like going to box, and I'm like, yo, man, you didn't save your money? You got to do anything? To, like, this is crazy. Damn. Legends hating on legends for over 20 years. He handled that well, didn't he? Yeah. You've got to, haven't you? You've got, to be, you've got to always stay. If anyone's ripping on you, just stay one step ahead. Yeah. I think beef is currency nowadays, especially when it's all about clicks and views and likes and things like that. Yeah. But I think what Charles Barkley's got to remember as well, he never won a, he never won a title. I know. I think he's very defensive about that, yeah. though. So you don't want to really get into many beefs because that's, that, that's the ultimate, isn't it? Well, that's, yeah. I don't know. Where do you sit in the title thing? Is, is he lying saying, you know, when people talk about greats, People might not mention Charles Barkley purely based no. on the fact he didn't win a title. Well, there's a video in our watch later. How good was Charles Barkley mm. actually? Mm. Because like I think I asked a question on one of yeah, the videos yeah. because he's not won anything. You know, to what degree is he up there? Yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really pip him one, but he played in that great team with Michael Jordan and Rodman. Yeah, and all the Chicago Bulls. If you look at um, Logan Paul and Tommy Fury, you know there was loads of beef before it and stuff mm. to sell a fight, and then after it, it's been nothing but. I respect that guy. He's a great guy. Well, you respect anyone once you get in the ring with him. They know anything that he's done outside of the true. ring. If you're going to stand yeah, in true. the ring with each other, then you've got to, you've got to show mutual respect at the end of it because you know they've they've gone mm. to war with you. But uh, they're selling yeah. tickets though as well, Absolute, aren't they? And like yeah. book deal, bourbon deal. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to sell your product at the end of the camera, isn't he? He's got, yeah. he's got a platform. Yeah, that's petty. But Charles and Scotty's feud doesn't compare to number four. Because Harden's beef with Giannis Always got him clowned by the entire world. <laughs> yeah, back in 2019, Harden got beat by Giannis for the NBA MVP award. And he went on a full-blown media tour just to complain about it. Telling GQ, I had eight 50-point games, two 60-point games in one season. And all the talk was about Giannis? There's no way. And then, in a 2020 ESPN interview, he even said Giannis wasn't skilled at basketball. You know, but I wish I could just run, run, and with seven feet and run and just dunk. Like, that takes no skill at all. <laughs> Disrespectful. But, just a year later, all that Giannis slander came back to bite Harden in the ass. Because in 2021, when the Bucks faced the Nets in the Eastern Conference playoffs, Giannis got his revenge eliminating Harden from the playoffs, leaving him so defeated that Harden wouldn't even shake Giannis's hand. But that's not where this ends, because after Giannis won the championship, the internet completely roasted Harden. Wait a second, Harden's not subscribed to the channel? What the hell is this guy doing? Everyone should be subscribed to the channel. But anyways, winning a championship that's a crazy way to settle a beef. But we're entering the top three. So things are about to get even crazier. Because in number three, LeBron James cost himself an NBA championship by disrespecting the legendary Dirk Nowitzki. See, back in 2011, LeBron's Heat were facing Dirk's Mavs in the NBA Finals. When after game four, Dirk started feeling a little weird. The night before, I go home and start shivering a little bit, started to call. I was like, oh, I probably just need to go to bed, but no, I'll be great tomorrow. But it just didn't happen that way. The trainer comes in and says, Dirk's sick. Huh? Sick? What do you got? 
We were like, we got the flu. Oh, I said, oh, no, 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 no. Not right now. Not in this moment. Yeah. Dirk caught the flu in the middle of the finals. Oh. And for some reason, instead of being a good sport about it, LeBron and Dwayne Wade decided to pull up to game five and mock the poor guy. Oh, did y'all hear me call? I think I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> this was a bad idea. I mean, have you ever seen Dirk Nowitzki angry? Well, no one else had either. Until now. In fact, this clip pissed him off so much that his own teammates literally forced him to watch it on replay so they could fire Dirk up for the rest of the series. And what do you know? It worked. Dirk went on a killing spree, winning two straight games and officially costing LeBron a championship. Dang it. LeBron, you messed up, dog. But hey, some legends mess up. That's how you come back from it, isn't it? Yeah, Bandit was a little bit lame, wasn't it? It, it wasn't great. Coffee, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Got cold, yeah. Could have gone in a bit harder than that. Yeah. But yeah, it, at least it pissed him off enough to just be like, nah, not having that. Yeah, one of the best players that's played as well, isn't he? So. I'd, I've not seen much about him, mm. if I'm being honest. Yeah, we'll do his uh, mixtape. I'm sure there's one out there. Yeah. A, a whole lot worse than that. Because for number two, I'm talking about the time that Kevin Durant stabbed his best friend Westbrook in the back. See, back in 2008, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook became teammates, and they spent the next eight seasons becoming one of the greatest duos in NBA history. But in 2016, after being eliminated by the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals, KD secretly blamed Russ and felt like he never won a championship with him. So he started exploring his options, and despite telling Russ to his face that he'd return to OKC and still be his teammate, KD went out the very next day and stabbed him in the back, agreeing to sign with the Warriors, the same team that had just eliminated them both from the playoffs. Now, that all sounds really disrespectful, but the worst part about this situation is that KD didn't even call Russ before his decision went public. Russ literally found out what happened by checking Twitter. Damn, it's sad to see disrespect just destroy a friendship. But number one, destroyed something even greater. Cause the disrespect between Shaq and Kobe marked the end of one of the most legendary teams in NBA history. And it all started in 1998, when during a Lakers practice, Shaq slapped Kobe in the face for trash talking. What a way to start a beef off. But uh, this was just the beginning of their beef. Cause in 2000, when Shaq showed up to training camp 20 pounds overweight, Kobe was so disgusted that he made fun of Shaq to a reporter, saying, a guy selling donuts at 7-Eleven has more pride in his job than Shaq. And with that comment, this beef became personal. They started bashing each other to the media every chance they got. So by 2003, despite winning three straight championships, the two could not stand each other. To the point where Shaq tried getting rid of Kobe for good, telling reporters, this is my team. Kobe doesn't like it. Let him go after the season. Mm, I don't think Kobe's gonna like that one. Yeah, after that, the two literally showed up to a Lakers practice trying to fight each other. So it became clear that whatever chemistry they had left was completely destroyed. And a few months later, they not only suffered their first loss in the NBA Finals, but they also told Lakers ownership to trade each other. So the next season, Shaq was sent to Miami. And with Kobe by himself, the once legendary Lakers team missed the playoffs for the first time in 11 years, officially ending their dynasty. But hey, it wasn't all that bad, because five years later in the 2009 NBA All-Star Game, they decided to officially squash their beef and become teammates again. Kobe is the best player in the league, so A-plus on that side, and you know, A-plus for you know, being a great guy. And he even let me you know, take the trophy home today for my boy, so appreciate him for that. Alright, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Damn. I wasn't expecting a beautiful ending, man. But, uh, you know what else I wasn't expecting? This video to pop up right here. Mm. Nice. 
Yeah, I think with, with sports, I mean, especially, I mean, NBA is such a small squad anyway. Yeah. You know, when you're talking a team of only five <laughs> players, they're not, no squad's bigger, but the, the, the locker rooms must be have such, you know, and training and everything like that. The egos must really ride high. Yeah. Big time. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of them where if everyone's on the same page and they're all in it as a team and working together, yeah. it's only going to benefit the team at the end of the day. I mean, I watch some of these, um, I don't know where, all or nothing uh, type uh, programs that they do on yeah. uh, Netflix, Netflix or no, it's the other one on Amazon. And uh, some of them you see egos in the changing rooms and I'm like, man, that would never happen yeah. with certain players. If certain yeah. players were around or if, you know, we had them in our changing rooms when we were like, growing up you know, in team sports, you come in, if someone was a dickhead, everyone would be like, nah. And you peg them back a little bit. You've got to be able to back it up. And I know a lot of people are very talented, but how many people squander their careers because they're a dick? Well, you look at some of these now. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, people like your Shacks of the world. I mean, they back it up. They're so, they're so wealthy as well. Yeah. That their ego goes above, goes above and beyond with fashion. With, you know, you're talking before about, I uh, can't remember about the uh, the bourbon. Was it Scotty Pippin? Uh, yeah, it, yeah. I think whoever it, was bringing the bourbon out and yeah. the, uh, the book. Yeah, you know? with his beef and with it, Charles Barkley. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So it's things like where they, you know, they're bringing, they've got so much money and so much uh, attitude, what they're trying to do. But even when they're in the locker room, they're turning up in you know, the, the flash cars, the, the clothing, the, you know, the yep. brands, the watches, everything else they're doing. It's, just, it's one big show off, but they're only showing it off amongst themselves for the most part. Yeah. Because you're in training, that's usually behind closed doors, and you're in you know, the games. The you're not wearing any jewellery or anything like that when you're playing the game. But you're in a locker room with everyone else that can afford all that stuff as don't well. Matter, mate. Don't matter, it's com- no, 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 competition. I'm, I'm agreeing with you that, I mean, that that flex kind of becomes pointless mm. and it just does show you for having the ridiculous yeah, ego. it does. Because yeah. you turn up in a, you know, a Bugatti one day, anyone else in that locker room could also turn up mm. in one if they wanted. So it's like, it's not like flexing where you're going out to like a club or, you know, some great restaurant yeah. or something. It's you and your guys. But you look at that, you look at the Kevin Durant, uh, Russell Westbrook one as well and mm. you're looking at it and you're thinking they're both turning up into a team where the expectations to win something is huge. Yeah, you know, and then when you're going out, you don't want to be the one blamed. No, by the, fan, by the fans or the management of you saying like, you know, that was that was all Kevin Durant's fault. And Kevin Durant's first one in going, well, it wasn't me, it was him. Yeah, and that's where it all starts, isn't it? These beefs like that. Yeah, mm. I suppose you at that sort of high level, the pressure they're dealing yeah. with, and some people can't accept responsibility for their actions. It's got to be the other guy. Well, it's the next. It's the next trade you're going to get as well. Yeah, and the next package you're going to get, the next deal you're going to secure by saying, listen, the reason I didn't win the championship was because of him. Yeah, then if you put me with him on your team and pay me three hundred million dollars a week, then, mm-hmm. then I'll win the title. Yeah. It's a shame when you see like elite partnerships and elite teams that are just absolutely smashing it. All you've got to do is keep the ship in the right direction. You know, steer the ship in the right yeah. direction and just just keep doing what you're doing. But then some extra factor gets involved and splits up partnerships that are just. Amazing, and yeah, they're working. I think we watched a video with uh, Steph Curry with his um, with what they were doing at the Golden State Warriors. I know he's been there. Now they look after him, but they also look after he looks after all the other people, and it's all it's a massive team sort of thing. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, the people are probably telling the comments about beefs in there, and you know, I'm sure there's loads in every every team and every sport's got them. Got to keep it professional, though. Yeah. In, in all walks of life, I think where there's things like that, get the job done first, mm. and then beef afterwards, Correct. or you know, wh- whatever it is, keep it yep. keep it out. Mm. I agree. Interesting one, though. Yep. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers.